Mark Daniel Nelson here with Make My Music. Today I want to talk to you about consistency in mixes, how to be consistent as a mixer. One of the things I've learned through the years with mixing is you have to be consistent in all types of genres, you have to be consistent between songs on an album, and what makes a great mixer an amazing mixer. There's a couple of rules I've learned over the years from a couple great people that taught me a few things to kind of follow. A couple tricks, a couple of uh, words of wisdom, and I want to pass it along. Obviously, the biggest way to be consistent is practice. Now, they say 10,000 hours makes you an expert. I don't know if that exists. I mean, I probably put in 100,000 hours over the last 20 years, and I still feel like I'm learning and trying to best my last project. I think healthy-wise, you want to keep yourself into a mindset that it's okay to fail. It's okay to not really nail the project you're working on and that you'll get it next time. Ed Churney taught me to do one cool little trick to be consistent in mixes. This is something I learned back in 2010 or something like that from him. The best way for you to know where you're at is to take your time, mix a song, separate yourself from that song, and then mix it again. And then analyze both of the songs and hear what you're doing and trying to understand, okay, obviously today I'm in a mindset and then next week when I'm mixing it, I'm in a completely different mindset. You're gonna make influential changes that are gonna be dependent on how you feel that day or what you ate or how you slept the night before or what's going on with your relationship or what's going on in the world. So a cool test is to take a step back after you mix a song and start fresh and do it again, completely again. Don't go back and listen to the first version. Take a complete step back, redo it, and then analyze both of them and see what you've been doing. Because there's consistencies in there that you're gonna follow and you're gonna say, okay, I wanna put reference on that or mark that down in my book. I remember doing that. I do that a lot of my mixes. Try to mix it up the next time, stuff like that. I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with using templates and same chains and reverb settings and such. I think as a creative, you can do other things to change it up. I do think that it's important to know how to break the rules that you're learning. I know this shouldn't be about schoolwork and studying and doing all you can to better yourself. It's supposed to be fun, it's supposed to be creative. But I do believe that if you really, really practice and you really do things over and over and over again, you will learn things that you didn't even know and you're operating in a level that you didn't even know you're doing. It's just an effortless thing when you're going at things as a mixer after you have a consistency backing you. I think that is the key as a mixer. You can be given a country album or a hip hop album, and if you know how to attack it, you're gonna kill it. There's very few mixers out there that are able to cross over and do things great. It's the one challenge I've tried to find is to learn how to do all different types of music. Now, if you can do all types of different music and be consistent at all of them, then you're gonna be absolute master at it. And I feel like I'm not even close yet. I feel like I'm still halfway there, still climbing that hill, trying to get better and better. Every time I do a mix, I take a listen after a week or so and go, okay, what do I not like about this? What can I change? What can I better to make this a little stronger? Because most of the time I'll listen, I say, it's great, it goes out, hits mastering, client likes it, label loves it, whatever. I'm known for low end and loud drums. And over time, I've tried to fight myself to break that habit but not break it in the sense that I wouldn't do it anymore, just break it when I want to and be aware of the little things that I know I do. And I think that is the lesson to learn when Bill Schnee said, you gotta be consistent. When Ed Cherney said, you have to look at your mixes and say, why are they similar? How can you be the same style or can you get it better? It's not about making two mixes sound the exact same over the course of a month's time. It's more about, are both these kick-ass? And that's the key. 
those are the biggest lessons I've learned in mixing is the consistency and how to translate and be consistent completely over all genres. I do believe that the two biggest pieces of advice I've gotten from Bill Schnee and Ed Journey were both based around consistency of mixing. The one rule is everyone probably can mix, but not everyone can do it every time. So the key there is to really hone in, focus on where your weaknesses are, and better yourself. When I started doing a lot more mixing and I left tracking a little bit behind, I started making a pact to myself that I would learn certain genres that I didn't enjoy. And I thought maybe that's a good idea for me to really understand why the music is you know, connecting to other people. Is it because of the guitars? Is it because of the drums? Is it the vocals? Is it the songs? Is it, is it the culture? What is it? And over time, I realized all good music is relevant, hip hop, country, rock and roll, bluegrass, jazz. If it's good, it's good. I feel like what's happening in the world and all the technology that's coming out, that every month you have to relearn and kind of get yourself involved in some of the new technology, new plugins, stuff like that. I think it's crucial to educate yourself constantly, watch videos, trust the people you follow, understand what they're doing, and just really go out and have fun. I know I keep saying it, have fun, but I really do believe you need to have fun. Try to best your last best thing. That's all I can say. Have a great week and thanks for watching.